and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we gather here this morning as God's family, with confidence we call upon our Heavenly Father, knowing of His mercy and of His compassion. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to be a visible sign of your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you will come again in all your glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord. We pray that we may see what must be done and gain strength to do what we have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit says, Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at the rebellion in the day of testing in the desert, where your ancestors tested and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Because of this, I was provoked with that generation and I said, they have always been of erring heart, and they do not know my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil and unfaithful heart, so as to forsake the living God. Encourage yourselves daily, while it is still today, so that none of you may grow hardened by the deceit of sin. We have become partners of Christ, if only we hold the beginning of the reality firm until the end. The word of the Lord. God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the days of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. Forty years I was wearied of that generation. I said, this people's heart goes astray. They do not know my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, a leper came to him, kneeling down, begged him, and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched the leper and said to him, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and 
he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to them, See that you tell no one anything, but go and show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Seems to me that it would be somewhat easy these days to harden our hearts with everything that's going on, whether it be the pandemic or politics or this or that, just to stay home and harden our hearts to this reality. That's giving in, that's giving up, that's taking the easy way. And I think ultimately the leper today stands before us as an example. A person who had every right and every possible means to harden his heart, to give up. He's isolated alone. But he still finds the hope in Jesus Christ. He still comes to Jesus in the midst of his own to do it for him. The person who should have hardened everything in his life is open to the possibility. The question ultimate to us is to ask ourselves as we go through our habits and our routines, how open are we? I'm open only if you do it my way. I'm open only if you tell me what makes sense to me, only to me, about me, for me, with me. Or are we truly open to the possibility of our God? Perhaps we should listen to our first reading today and say, take care of my brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil and unfaithful heart so as to forsake the living God. So if today when you hear his voice, what is going to be your response? And I invite you to stand. And together we have the courage to make known our needs and our desires to our loving and compassionate Father. We pray for our church, for our Holy Father, our bishops, and all the women and men who serve in the name of Jesus Christ. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for lasting peace and justice throughout our world. For interwar, terrorism, and racism. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray that we may have the courage to truly examine our hearts and minds and actions, to truly see how open we really are to God, and ask for forgiveness and compassion for those times when we fail to do so. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Continue to pray for an end to the pandemic. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for all those who are sick, hospitalized, and homebound, and all those entrusted with their care. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for all those who have died, those who will die today, and particularly those who will die alone. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us take a moment and silently pray for our own attention. We pray for all our intentions, including the intentions for Wilfredo Vargas Balsi. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we make known to you our needs and our desires. Those we speak aloud and those we speak in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you grant them, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed do you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer, food of the earth, the work of human hands. 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed and blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine that we offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God And praying, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you. We pray that it may restore them to holiness and attain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming again in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you. As without end, we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new foam so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together now, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity and accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be And I invite you to be seated at this time. We will continue to give our communion starting here in the front row over there and going to the back row, third row, second row, first row, sanitizing your hands, extending your hands, demasking, consuming and remasking on the spot there and coming back to your seats along this way.
And let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve you with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master this morning has come to its end. May we go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Father.